Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and this is a review of the Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II Digital Compact Camera. The original LX100 was a really interesting proposition when it was announced. Unlike many of its competitors, Panasonic used a full Micro Four Thirds sensor, which means that the actual size of that sensor was much bigger. They linked this to a Leica 24-75 f1.7 to 2.8 lens, which allowed you to get really high quality photographs. For the Mark II version of this camera, they've stuck with the same recipe. They've actually updated the sensor to uh, the one from the GX9. This means that you actually get photographs up to 17 megapixels, and they've kept the same Leica 24 to 75 millimeter lens. I think this is a really good choice. 24mm is a very good wide angle and is sort of seen as the standard in sort of professional wide angle um, lenses. 75mm is 5mm above what a standard 24-70mm to lens would be and I think in most situations that's a perfectly good lens. You can extend this digitally to 150mm, however I wouldn't really recommend doing that as you can probably crop your photographs afterwards and get a better result. The thing is, you don't buy an LX100 Mark II just for the sensor or the lens. You buy it for the complete package. The build quality of this camera is really good. It's metal throughout. You add to this a whole load of switches, dials, which allow you to make changes on the fly. I think one of the things this camera has always excelled at is giving the user the change in perspective that you can't get on other cameras. You do this by using a switch here on the top of the lens, which allows you to choose bar from three by two, 16 by nine, square one by one, or four by three. The interesting thing is that as a result of this setting, you never actually use the full 20 megapixels of the sensor. The maximum you can use is in three by two, which is a 17 megapixel photograph. I actually think this is a good solution as it means you don't crop down the sensor when you change those sizes. It's a very clever way of achieving different perspectives without actually diminishing image quality. Another thing I've really liked about this camera is the exposure compensation dial. To have it as the main dial right where your thumb rests means it's very easy to make quick changes to your exposure. I don't think someone that buys this camera would necessarily want to use it in full manual mode. Those kind of users are going to buy DSLRs and mirrorless cameras that allow them to do so. However, being able to make small changes to the exposure on the fly is a really nice touch. In addition, you have an exposure um, dial here, which allows you to switch between automatic mode to choosing the actual full exposure time from four, up to 4,000 of a second. Another thing I like about this camera is the fact it has an electronic viewfinder. With so many compact cameras today, they've done away with the viewfinder, whether electronic or indeed optical, and just forced you to use a touchscreen. For me, being able to hold the camera up to your eye and use it like you would an SLR allows you to frame your images properly and take a much more considered photograph than you would if you're simply holding the camera out in front of you. What's more, I've always found that being able to hold it up to your eye allows you to get three points of contact, i.e. both hands and your eye, to stabilise the camera as best as possible. This does have optical image stabilisation in the 24-75mm lens, which does mean that you can take photographs at very low shutter speeds. However, having that ability to take an even more stable photograph, make sure you get as many keepers as possible. One of the things I'm not quite so fond of is the Panasonic menu system. They have added a touchscreen to this camera. I don't think the original LX100 did have one. However, even then, it can be quite frustrating going through menu bank after menu bank in order to find that little setting you want to change. Thankfully, the majority of the uh, settings that you might want to change are available on the back. You can choose to change white balance, ISO and so on fairly easily. There are also customizable function buttons, which mean you can change settings uh, depending on what you want to do and program them to a particular button to allow quick changes on the fly. 
One thing this camera has, which I think is incredibly rare and commendable, is an aperture dial. You can leave that aperture dial in A and automatically let the camera choose your aperture for you. However, if you wish to choose the aperture, you simply have to click it out of A and you can choose between 1.7 and f16. It also has a manual focus ring as well, so if you'd like to manually focus this camera, it's easily achieved with the manual ring, so it's almost like using a mirrorless or DSLR camera. This camera can also shoot 4K in 30 frames a second, which is very good. Um, I think that the video that this outputs is extremely high quality. If you think about the fact that a lot of vloggers nowadays use Panasonic's Lumix um, GX9 or similar cameras, this has the exact same sensor, so you can expect the same image quality out of it. The um, maximum aperture of f1.7 at 24mm also means you have a very bright lens, which is great in low light. Link to that optical and stabilization, and this really is a camera for all occasions. I don't think there's much I'd change about the camera. Um, perhaps some people would like a slightly longer lens, but you're very quickly going to lose the low aperture, and I think that's one of the things that Sony got wrong with the latest RX100 Mark VI, which is probably one of the main competitors of this camera. Alongside the um, smaller sensor, the Sony's only had one inch sensor, um, the lens that they put on, on top of front of it I don't think was as, as good as this one, so I do think this is a better choice over the RX100. Lastly, I just wanted to mention ergonomics, which is a strange thing because a lot of these compact cameras are the same very small, almost rangefinder-esque design. However, something has been done to the um, grip on this LX100 Mark II, which makes it a lot more comfortable to hold than the Mark I. I think they've widened the front of the grip and added a little bit more of a thumb grip, but it makes a really big difference. I think that it's one of the things that might mean that people that own an LX100 might think about upgrading to it, alongside the fact that you can get 16, 17 megapixel uh, photographs up from 12 megapixels on the LX100 Mark I. I think that grip is a real killer and it will make a big difference to your actual shooting experience. So those are my thoughts on the Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II. Um, would love to hear what you think as well. Please do add some comments below. Um, and if you like this video, please do hit thumbs up and do consider subscribing as well. Thank you very much and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.